namaste. Always a pleasure to be here among so many uh, wonderful friends and colleagues. So we've been trying to show the, the, the scale and breadth of activities of the Nutrition Innovation Lab across these, uh, these excellent talks uh, from very micro to very macro. Right? So we started with Shivani looking at uh, picograms of uh, toxins in albumin through to child level measures, metrics of, of growth velocity, through to the food environment and to markets. Uh, and what people choose to, to purchase and consume, and up to the more macro environment, perhaps the enabling environment, in which policies and programs are implemented. So I'm presenting this actually on behalf of a, a wide team of, of colleagues from uh, Grace Namarembe, who was here last year, Robin Shrestra, Ash Lamichane, of course, and Kidar Baral, and uh, Dale Davis, and, and Shivani, and others. Um, but I wanted to give you a sense of why, why understanding the governance, and I, I'll explain that term, of, of nutrition matters, right? So the, there's a large literature uh, in economics, in political science, about the importance of good governance to development outcomes of all kinds, whether it's economic growth or the uh, activities of democracy, but even for nutrition. Arguably, this is from a, st a statement from the uh, Lancet series of 2013, arguing that we need to know more, not just what needs to be done, what works at a programmatic level. We also need to know more about how and why things work. Uh, and so governance, in this sense, is a catch-all phrase for all the activities that are behind what happens at the household level, essentially. Right? So the choices, that, that uh, the decisions at the household le level matter immensely to nutrition, but perhaps also the environment in which those choices are framed matters too. So these data, I'm again drawing on, on the same Poshan study. Of course, now we have provinces. The data we, that were collected prior were collected prior in the old uh, structure. Um, but in addition to all the household level data that have, has been described uh, by Dr. Manahar and Dr. Thorne Lyman, we also interviewed uh, civil servants in these same locations, right? So the civil servants across different ministries and at different levels of responsibility from district and province down to the Alaka, uh, the VDC and, and ward level. And at ward level, it was uh, frontline workers, it was FCHVs, social mobilizers, and up above that, it was civil servants in the line uh, ministries. So interviewed them over time um, on a range of, uh, of topics. Before this complex diagram were some very simple bar charts, were examples of questions that were asked to those 433 office holders at two periods of time, 2014, 2016, and they covered a range of topics under, about understanding nutrition, what, what are, what's, what do you understand as your own responsibility in your job in implementing something like the multi-sector nutrition plan or being a participant in implementing Suahara 1 and, and then Suahara 2. Um, how effective is collaboration? both within your office, on nutrition, on achieving those nutrition goals of MNSP, or across sectors with other colleagues in other offices? Do you have access to sufficient financial resources, actual budgetary power in your office to do what you feel you have to do to be part of implementing a large national policy? What capacities exist? Do you feel trained, adequately trained? Do you have the technical knowledge to take this on? Do you feel your colleagues in your office are adequately trained? Do you feel the collaborators in other sectors are adequately trained, right? So those are the kinds of questions that were asked systematically, a very large range of questions to begin with, gradually whittled down. Now the impetus, think of this a little bit, the impetus of this is to see if we can come up with a, a coherent way of measuring something that is almost never measured. Right? We all use the Household Food Insecurity Access Scale or Diet Diversity Scores. Right? So think of it in that sense. Can we come up with some kind of scoring that captures the quality, the effectiveness, 
of being able to implement a large-scale policy or program. And what we, what we saw uh, in terms of positives, for example, so this, this uh, red is 2014, blue is 2016. The further you, you, closer to the outer rim, the better. The closer to the center is worse, right? So what you're seeing is the answers to those questions change over time. So some positives, right? So if it moves from red to blue over time to, and outwards, like this one, you feel that your colleagues in your office have the right skills and the right training for your office to do its job to improve nutrition. A slight gain between those two years. Do you feel you have adequate support from your supervisors in your line ministry in your office to do the job? That was already pretty good, but that continued improving over time. Other things that had big improvements, do you feel you have access to sufficient non-financial, non-budgetary resources to do your job adequately? That's technical information. It's access to understanding what other people are doing what, what in their implementation of their plans. Another uh, improvement was we feel now all our work decisions on implementing what we do for nutrition are based on evidence. They're actually based on real uh, understanding of what works and what needs to be done. And that over time, we're, fe we're seeing a uh, collaboration across offices, across sectors, becoming increasingly effective. Right? So those are all quite positive. I think there's actually one more uh, positive, is that we now feel more than before that necessary stakeholders are included in discussions of what needs to be done to tackle nutrition, right? So most of this, again, remember, this is in the context of rollout of Suahara, of rollout of MNSP, of lots of awareness building, lots of training over this, uh, this period. And so you're seeing a lot of change, a lot of positives happening um, over time. There were a few negatives. One thing that changed in the negative sense was belief that my nutrition, my responsibilities around nutrition are well defined. That went backwards. And that might be because more people are engaged in nutrition and there was a growing sense over time that we're actually getting a little bit less sure about who's responsible for what because we're all being asked to be responsible for something. Right? So we have to pay attention to that. We also have to pay attention to things that were low and actually didn't improve. The sense that we're adequately tra trained in relation to nutrition and improved food systems. Uh, that had, didn't shift. That we have adequate financial resources to do the job that we're being tasked for. And that we have access to a budget on a timely basis and when we need it to do the job that we want to do. Remember, this is not national level. This is at all the levels. Uh, from district down to uh, VDC uh, and below. So there's some things that didn't move, some things that did move. The positive there is that this is fair, this set of questions that we came up with is fairly sensitive to change. So you get some things improving, some things regressing, and others not moving at all. So we then use principal components analysis and standardize those questions into a subset uh, to try and uh, create a tool a 30, 40 question tool that could be applied in pretty much any context, um, ranging from zero to 100. And, and the questions were derived from principal components analysis of a very large set, much larger set of questions, and cover those range of, of key elements of effective governance. Of, and then we came up with a score. Now, we can apply that score, the one piece that none of you have seen yet, we can apply that score at the VDC level or at the district level. So one can uh, say that you know, one particular um, district has a nutrition governance index of, this isn't the actual one, but a score of 43. Another would have a score of 35, let's say. Another would have 55, right? So one can apply then that score to the same locations where we collected child anthropometry as a potential outcome. Does it matter? Does it matter to the outcomes we measure in terms of determinants of stunting, let's say, if we understand or not the effectiveness of implementation of policies? 
Now remember, when we do, our, we do regression analyses, we do the, the R squared to understand how much of the determinants do we understand, those R squareds are typically relatively low. They explain only a certain share of the variability or of the problem we're trying to understand. So maybe we can understand a little bit more. So we've been trying then to run regressions explaining the nutrition outcomes, the, the, the stunting outcomes at the VDC level, plugging in the nutrition governance index as one of the potential determinants alongside the ward level mean of maternal education or the ward level mean of household food insecurity and, and other things. And this is preliminary data, but actually, lo and behold, surprisingly, but nice to see, that the governance index came out as one significant independent predictor. We still have to do more on this, but it suggests that maybe we can get some greater understanding on the way things are done, not just what is done, but the way things are done in different places as one of the explanatory factors in the outcomes that we are concerned about. So overall, what we, what we see is that you know, that change in just a couple of years uh, ex explained 3% uh, of the difference in H, uh, high for HZ score. Uh, maybe, maybe not big, but we can certainly try and improve that through enhanced training, enhanced awareness, enhanced resources available to those responsible for implementing national policies. What we find is this nutrition governance index seems to be statistically uh, significantly correlated with an outcome of interest. We can explore other outcomes of interest. Maybe it's diet diversity score, or it's maybe it's sales of, or purchases of, of processed foods versus uh, nutrient-rich foods. Uh, key drivers of that nutrition governance index, or the positive changes, were increasing awareness, increased training, increased access to technical information, increased support from the supervisors, really. So a strengthening of responsibilities and a strengthening of commitment from the individuals we are interviewing because they feel empowered to do the job better. That means we can still do a lot more. So maybe, maybe, greater investment, more intensity of training, and more focused attention to those areas that haven't changed enough could be one of the mechanisms for bringing about more, uh, more change, positive changes in or accelerating reductions in stunting, for example. So conclusions, this, it looks like measuring policy level, macro level, things like governance, the quality of commitment and collaboration is feasible. It seems to be feasible, it seems to be worth doing, and we seem to be tracking with the efforts, the great, huge efforts that the government's been putting into MNSP rollout, the Suhara rollout, and other um, programs. Does seem to be uh, telling us something, some correlation with child stunting outcomes. Um, and this kind of tool, we could replicate it in other countries, in other settings, but it looks like something, a novel metric, uh, that we may want to apply um, elsewhere. Thank you.